Now to a very mysterious story in Canberra, a top public servant, the longtime secretary of the Home Affairs Department, Mark Pizzullo, has been somehow caught sending many, many WhatsApp messages, how was that intercepted, to a Liberal Party power broker, Scott Briggs, when Briggs was the key confidant of then Prime Minister Scott Morrison. These were texts which Pizzullo offered political advice and damning assessments of Liberal ministers who should be sacked, who should be appointed, who should be what. Um, here's some of what's screened on 60 Minutes last night about this. If Dutton is out, give me Taylor or Tudge. You need a right winger in there. People smugglers will be watching. Agree. Please feed that in. Will do. Brandis's behaviour is getting worse. OK, I fed that into the PM. I think things may be getting closer to a Brandis departure. George seems to be trying to negotiate a stay of execution. If that were to occur, he would have to change his mindset and behaviours about home affairs. He is in complete denial. Now, I've got to say that Pizzullo's political judgments were pretty good. I mean, he told Briggs, for instance, that Senator Mary's Payne was completely ineffectual as Defence Minister. Tick, tick. And he almost had a heart attack, he said, when former Foreign Minister Julie Bishop, a real lightweight, was considering a tilt to become Prime Minister. But Anthony Albanese today said uh, Matt Pizzullo had been told to stand aside while there's an inquiry into him. And I don't think he'll be back. Joining me is the country's top foreign affairs writer, Greg Sheridan of The Australian. Greg Sheridan, thank you so much for joining me. You would have had a bit to deal with uh, Mike Pizzullo uh, when he was first uh, Secretary of the Immigration Department in Home Affairs, particularly with the national security roles as well that that involves. What do you make of these texts and the man himself? Well, Andrew, a couple of very important things to note here. Uh, so I, I haven't read all the texts and I don't know exactly what they disclose, but there's plainly been a concerted campaign to get Pizzullo for some time. Uh, he plainly has very powerful enemies. According to the story, many of these text messages were on the encrypted service of, uh, of, um, of uh, you know, uh, WhatsApp and WhatsApp. also, I think, Signal. And uh, I thought it was pretty hard to decrypt signals. So somebody very powerful with very good technology is out to get Pizzullo. That ought to tell you something. The other thing is that, uh, you know, these texts, I don't know what's in them, so they may, they may justify Pizzullo going. But this will be a tragedy if Pizzullo goes in many ways because he gets more done before morning tea than the rest of the public service gets done in a year. And... Um, you know, I campaigned for a long time that he should have come back to defence as the Secretary of the Defence Department. We may not be in the strategically naked, defenceless position we're in right now. I mean, he is a dedicated Australian who cares profoundly about our national security and, unlike almost everyone else in Canberra, actually comes to work every day and tries to make things happen. And um, so I'm not making any judgment about the text, but I think we'll be a poorer nation if Pizzullo, uh, if Pizzullo is, uh, is blotted out of, um, out of leadership. And again, I'd raise the question what the motivation has been to get Pizzullo over these recent months. Well, I, I think there's a lot of what you say there. I mean, I have to say, Greg, as I said earlier, his political judgment seems pretty good, you know, nearly fainting to think that uh, Julie Bishop uh, had the qualities to become Prime Minister uh, and, and saying that Maurice Payne was uh, hopeless in defence, uh, absolutely true. Uh, I wonder whether he... I mean, people... I'm hearing people saying cross the line by giving political advice as to which ministers should go where, but maybe we're just being naive. I mean, maybe that's what a good secretary does. I don't know. Well, one thing, of course, is that um, it's clear now that there is no realm of privacy in modern life. Uh, so you're not allowed to have... So I, I'm not giving Mike a blanket exemption from everything revealed in these texts because I haven't seen them all. But it seems that you're not allowed to have a private conversation. As you say, Andrew, Maurice Payne was an astonishingly ineffectual defence minister. She's one of the reasons we're in such a mess right now, although I wouldn't single her out. There are other ineffective defence ministers too. But uh, do you think that... that Pizzullo was the only person in Canberra to make this observation in a private conversation with a friend. But now you can be in deep trouble for things you say in private conversation which are not 
you know, um, offensive or cross the line or illegal or anything like that, but which simply, um, you know, uh, cast judgments on people that you're entitled to make judgments about. Now, I, I'm not offering a blanket exemption for Mike here or anything like that, but uh, but a lot of these things which are most titillating to the public are just private conversations. And I tell you what, if I had a dollar for everybody in Canberra who told me Maurice Payne was an ineffective defence minister, I'd be a wealthy man. Yeah, there's a matter of a, uh, a private a contract that he uh, issued without without uh, going to tender to a company linked to Briggs, but um, I don't know. It seemed a bit tenuous to me, and I I share your concern. Who's trying to get Pizzullo and for what really? Greg, something very alarming. China's dictator has just made a deal with the president of one of our closest neighbours, Timor Leste, or East Timor. How worrying is this? Look, I think this is a bad development, Andrew. Uh, China is trying to get into every pore of the South Pacific, and our intelligence agencies believe it wants a military base in the South Pacific eventually. We're in a poor position to criticise Timor-Leste because under the previous coalition government, for reasons that are completely, uh, in, you know, in, indecipherable, we ourselves embarked on a comprehensive strategic partnership with China. So if we go to Timor-Leste and say, don't you guys dare get into a comprehensive strategic partnership with China, they can say to us, well, how come it's OK for you and no good for us? But nonetheless, the um, successful effort of Beijing to gain influence, gain security agreements, gain presence all through the South Pacific and to inject a lot of money in very dodgy aid projects and uh, and in other payments, you know, which are extremely irregular all through the South Pacific is a very big problem for Australia. And if China ever does establish a military base somewhere in the South Pacific, that would be utterly catastrophic for Australia. And with President Guzmao's uh, left-wing past, you know, there's a little worry about simpatico there. I find it interesting, Greg, you know, when uh, China made a deal with the Solomon Islands, this was a huge scandal, uh, you know, Scott Morrison asleep at the wheel. When this happens at East Timor, which is even closer, uh, suddenly there's nothing to see here, folks.